it. So Class B Bravo airspace is controlled airspace and is shown as solid blue circles or lines. And it'll be seen at major airports like Boston, Atlanta, Philadelphia, New York, LAX, and Chicago O'Hare. Now the innermost circle of airspace typically extends outward five nautical miles from the center of the airport and extends from the surface to 10,000 feet MSL. This airport, Philadelphia Airport, you'll see is denoted in the runway icons. And whenever you see an airport denoted in the runway icons, it means the shortest length of the runway is at least 8,069 feet or longer. So the airspace immediately surrounding the airport, again, five miles from the center of the airport, it runs typically from the surface up to 10,000 feet. The airspace actually runs from the surface up to 7,000 feet MSL. Now the numbers will be shown in hundreds of feet. And so the FAA removes two zeros and they're shown like in these blue fractions. So southeast of Philadelphia Airport, you see the airspace runs from the surface to 7,000 feet, surface being SFC up to 7,000 feet. However, on the northwest side, you can see the airspace runs from 300 feet MSL up to 7,000 feet. And actually just southwest of the airport, it starts at 600 feet and runs up to 7,000 feet. The first shelf of airspace typically extends out 10 nautical miles from the center of the airport. The airspace here runs from 1500 feet MSL up to 7000 feet MSL. And again, that is the 1500 feet is the bottom of the shelf of airspace. Underneath that airspace is actually uncontrolled Class G airspace. And in this example, there's actually some Class E airspace as well. The second shelf of airspace, typically 15 miles out from the center of the airport. And this second shelf of airspace, the lower shelf of airspace, begins at 2,000 feet above mean sea level, 2,000 feet MSL and of course extends up to a ceiling of 7,000 feet MSL. The third shelf of airspace has several different areas of where the lower shelf begins. And here in these sections, you can see it begins at 3,000 feet MSL and extends up to 7,000 feet. Yet in these other areas, it begins at 3,500 feet MSL and extends up to 7,000 feet. These blue lines show where the airspaces are divided. Just up into this east of the Philadelphia area, 3,000 feet is where the airspace lower shelf begins. And then just south of it, it begins at 3,500 feet. I want to point out to the northeast, there's an airport, northeast Philadelphia, and that airport is shown in blue. And that also indicates that it is a controlled airport. It has an operating control tower, but it is nestled inside what's called Class D Delta airspace. And that's denoted with the dashed circles or lines. And you can see that that is cut out into this Class B Bravo airspace. So even though this airspace in this outer shelf begins at 3000 feet above mean sea level, just on the other side of this dashed Delta line, we have Class D Delta airspace. And Class D Delta airspace starts at the surface. And in this case, it runs up to a ceiling of 2,600 feet. And we know that because there is a 26 inside this dashed square. And again, we'll get into some Class D airspace in a couple of slides, but I just wanted to point that out to you as well. And here we have an airport that's denoted in a magenta color, and you'll see a few of those sprinkled throughout this sectional chart. 
And when you see an airport icon denoted in magenta, that indicates it's a non-towered airport. There is no operating control tower there. I want to also point out that the airport has a star as well as the controlled airports. And a star just simply means that there is a lighted beacon in operation from sunset to sunrise. And then when you see squares protruding from these little round icons, that just means there's fuel services for manned pilots as well. Now, the importance of knowing sectional charts and being able to interpret them is if, for example, if you were hired to inspect this group of towers, we'll call them towers, they are would be called obstacles. And But if you were hypothetically hired to inspect this group of towers, you would need to know if that tower is in controlled airspace or not. And the tallest uppermost part of one of these towers is 1,055 feet MSL above mean sea level. The number below it in parentheses, 973 would be above ground level. So if you were hired to inspect these towers, you would know that you could fly up to 973 feet as permitted by part 107 and perhaps even 400 feet more to inspect the uppermost top of these towers and you would still be well under this 1,500 foot shelf of airspace. And also I want to point out the little lightning bolts just also indicate that this tower is lighted. Thank <laughs> you.